Honey. Why are you whispering? Why are you whispering? I'm not whispering. The microphone picks up my voice very clearly and easily. Oh, I thought you were using your sexy voice on me or something. Like, honey. No. <laughs> it's, it's video recording time. Don't be doing that here. Cut People are watching this thing. <laughs> Let me ask you a question, please. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> what is the difference between having faith and believing versus knowing? Hmm. That, that's, well, think about it this way. We, we could use ourselves as, as examples for this one. We're both Catholics, right? We are. As far as I know. But I was raised in a different country. You were raised here in America. Uh -huh. And two different versions of the Catholic faith, apparently. I didn't know there were two, two three versions until well, I met you. a whole lot more than that. Exactly, right? <laughs> so, as we go through this, you'll see how it all comes together. But the point is that the way you're brought up when, when you're associated with a religion is that you're always taught to, you have to believe, right? Or just, you, you, have you have to, to have, have faith. faith. Exactly, I always tell you that. Mm -hmm. You have to have faith. And if you don't have faith, then what does that mean about you? That means that uh, a lot of good things won't happen for you. Your life won't be easy. Well, the point is you're not a good Catholic. <laughs> According to Catholic right? Church, you're not exactly. a good Catholic. If you don't have faith, you're not a good Catholic. And how do you get blessings from God if you don't have faith? Mm -hmm. Right? And that's that's the bottom line. Now, we're, we're talking about Catholicism because that's what we really that's what we know about. That's what we identify with. And mm -hmm. we don't want to talk about any other faiths because we don't want to think that we're putting it down. Right. So we can talk about the faith that we practice because if the Pope calls me, I'll tell him, well, this is really how I feel about it. So take that cap off your head or something. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, then. Anyway, so Let's continue. We're, we're, we're taught to have faith. Uh -huh. Well, growing up, I had a, a friend of mine who was a teacher in grade school when I was there. His name is, you, did you ever meet Father, Father Lazarus? No, he died before you and I uh, Before even we got started. Together. I got it. Mm -hmm. Okay. But um, even before he became a priest, he was studying the Bible and he would teach me about the Bible. He was like this mentor to me, right? Mm hmm. This, young kid myself uh, in the middle school and when he decided to become a priest you know he told me about it and he even told me I should think about it so I thought about it seriously and after he became a priest I thought about it even more seriously because he would come and spend time with me so he, he studied in America and then he would go back home and spend time there for the summer taught me a lot mm -hmm. then of course you, you know my uncle right. Bert, Bert Thomas and then with him, he was much older. By the time you met him, he was in his 70s, right, or 80s? 70s. 70s. Mm -hmm. uh, retired, or almost retired at the time. And then that's when he told me, he said, you know, there's a difference between knowing something and just believing and having faith. Uh, this is a brother in the Catholic faith mm -hmm. telling me this. He said, the problem with the way we've taught people is that we tell them they have to have faith. And that's where things can go bad, because the moment that faith is questioned, then people become shaky, because that was their foundation. And if you just blindly follow something, which is faith or believing, when you're questioned, you can't give the answer, you start to doubt things. Yes. So that's faith or believing. See, when you know something, you know it because you've experienced it. So on the other side, you get to experiment. You get to find out if something is real. And you're, you're not afraid to try. Mm -hmm. And that's what the teaching does. The Ascended Masters teach us to go and try, to question, right? Mm -hmm. If we're not sure about something, don't just dismiss it. See if it works, all right? Test it for yourself. And when you test it for yourself and you get that result, nobody can tell you that it doesn't work because you know the benefits of what this does for you. So anybody can say whatever they want. So you're a stronger person if you go through the knowing, the testing, than if you just accept something by faith and just believing it. You know, and if you want to grow, whether you're Catholic or 
whatever faith you practice, it's good for you to go and try what they tell you. You know, if they say, for example, Jesus said what? Through me, everything's possible. Right. Okay, then test it for yourself. Don't just, don't just have faith in it. All right, Jesus, you said that through you, everything's possible. I'm going to test that. Next time you're going through a tough time or something of a challenge, what do you do? You turn towards Jesus. Okay, Jesus, you said through you, everything's possible. So right now, I don't think this is possible. This looks impossible to me, but I know that through you, I don't have to worry about it. So I hand this over to you and see what happens. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Yes. Now, when you and I met, I remember one of the first things we talked about was religion because you were a very religious person. Yes, I didn't say spiritual, I said religious, right? Because there's a difference between the two. Where would you put yourself? Were you um, a believer or someone of faith? Or were you someone that knew, like you, you just knew when it came to religion? You knew about what you were doing when it came to religion? Or do you just believe, have faith, just follow? I think it was a combination. I knew the angels and saints were always there for me because of personal experience with them. But I only followed and believed and had faith in what I was taught, which is basically just follow the Ten Commandments. If you break one of those laws, then you have consequences. You have to suffer. Okay. So uh, did you ever have experience where maybe you questioned the existence of angels since you said you knew about the angels? Did anything ever come up where you wondered if they were real? I did not question that. Um, mm -hmm. In my early 20s, a good friend of mine named Tammy, mm -hmm. we had a conversation about religion one night. Because we were both Catholic, both raised Catholic. I was raised the traditional Latin way, she was raised the new English mass way. So again, two different cultures. And she just started asking me questions and I would answer them to the best of what I had been taught through my, the catechism lessons in the church, but I couldn't answer all of her questions. And she even brought up things that were going on at the time about the Pope and what he was doing, and I could not answer. And it frustrated me, and it got me upset. And she started saying you know, things like, well, how do you know that um, the Jehovah's Witnesses are wrong in what they believe? And she started telling me some of the things they believe. And I never talked to a Jehovah's Witness. I had no idea what they believed. You just knew they were wrong. I did. Yep. I was always told okay. anybody outside of the Catholic Church is wrong. Huh. And that's all I went by. Right. You know, you, you have to know Jesus. You have to be baptized. You have to follow uh, the Ten Commandments and get all the sacraments from the Catholic Church. Otherwise, you're a hopeless case. But when she started questioning me and saying, well, what about the Buddhists? And what about the... And she just went through all these different things. And it was a long conversation. And by the time we were done, I felt like I really didn't know anything. And so I almost stopped going to church completely at that point. But it was the Catholic Church. And I started going to other churches. These big Christian churches. I started going to Bible studies. And just um, from the work I started doing, I was learning about other cultures and asking questions about other faiths and religions at that point. So I started to waver in my beliefs of what I was taught through the Catholic Church because I didn't think that that was all there was to life anymore. Does that make sense? It doesn't matter if it makes sense. But well, I want to make sure that what I, that you understand what I was talking about. What oh, I, I understand. I, okay. I can follow. I can follow it. But now you just profess that you're Catholic. So, what happened? <laughs> well, as I went on my journey, uh, it strengthened what I know to be true. And then I was able to say, okay, those are things that I believed, but I don't believe those things anymore because this is what I know to be true at this point. So it kind of just solidified things for me in a way where I have a, a knowing of who God is, of what spirituality is versus just following religious practices that I was following before. Will you please give me some details on that? I don't, um, not there. You, um, I'd like to get caught up in your thinking <laughs> process. Um, for example, a big one for Catholics is confession. 
Okay. You have to go to the priest and confess your sins, and that's the only way that your, that your wrongdoings will be forgiven and you'll be able to enter the gates of heaven. But from what I learned, it's not like that. I mean, you have to come back and pay for what you've done wrong, whether you've already done so in this light, depending on the degree of what you did or not. So I didn't see the need to follow that practice anymore, something I believed in before. Instead, I just said, you know what? That's for the people maybe who need some kind of psychological help, and they just have to go talk to a priest. <laughs> but oh, it's not so, for me anymore. So, so you think people that <laughs> go, uh, uh, they do penance, they, they've lost mm -hmm. their minds or something? I don't think they lost their minds. Oh, okay. I just, just see joking. it differently now, right? Got it. Okay. Where my understanding, my knowing now is, I don't have to go tell anyone the things that I've done wrong. I have to know it, and I have to make amends for it. It's my responsibility. I can't just have someone say, oh, now go say ten Hail Marys and you're forgiven. And then go out and do it again. Like those monster movies, right? Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I can follow it a little bit. Now, where does it, going back to the knowing and the faith, right? Mm -hmm. Well, think about what you said. You said that you were told anyone that doesn't follow Jesus, they go to you know where, right? Mm -hmm. But in the Bible... It states very clearly, God said, Thou shalt not judge, and that He's the only judge. I judged people all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I condemned people when I was in school. All my classmates, oh, that one's going down to you know where, oh, that one too. You know, I just, because of what I had been taught. Oh, you're not Catholic? Oh, sorry for you. I tried my best to convert people to Catholicism too. See that? And I did help quite a few, but you helped. You, so so you're still you still think you still did think the right that, thing. Yeah, I still I still did. <laughs> Who said they were supposed to be Catholic exactly. in this lifetime? Well, yeah. but you know what? That's something that I, I I believe as well at this point is that you might have been raised in a religion, and then as you grow and change, you realize that maybe those beliefs that belief system doesn't fit you anymore, and so you move on and go somewhere else. How does that fit into your conversions? Yeah, they just need to <laughs> move on from wherever they were. <laughs> yeah, <it laughs> Some does. of them didn't even know God, you know. Well, that's good. You religion. introduce them to it. I'm not saying it was a bad thing. <laughs> but, but, what, but what I'm saying is that, but how do you know that that's where they were supposed to be? I don't. Exactly. I just did what I thought was right at the time. And that, that's good enough. Mm -hmm. Okay? But now, so the, the thing about knowing and having faith is that by you and the actions you took was based on you believing wholeheartedly in what you're doing right mm -hmm. however if you notice because of your belief when you were questioned and you couldn't answer you're like i have to leave this alone because there's something wrong here and it forced you to go searching right if you know you won't go searching because you already know that's correct get the difference mm -hmm. we would like people to get to the point where they know wherever they are right now when it comes to religion again I'm not saying spirituality because spirituality is completely different right. but it you know religious life wherever you are if you are just there by faith or by belief alone you have to have a challenge now that you'll find yourself switching churches have you had people go from one church to the next to the next yes and they say like, I don't like the pastor I don't like this I don't like that I've right? met a lot of people who've done that and if, if you're deciding where you go for a religion based on whether or not you like somebody then I don't remember Jesus saying I'm teaching you a new way because I don't like any of the Jews that lead the Jewish people right now I don't, he never said that, right? <laughs> right. He wasn't um, trying to get us to form social cliques. Exactly. Mm -hmm. He was just there teaching, saying, hey, here's what you're supposed to do. This is what God wants us to do, and this is what we're supposed to do. Well, that's what we're supposed to be doing as well. All right? We should go and test what we're told. Mm -hmm. You know? You, you have to be willing to do that. If you're just accepting what you're told, then again, you will have a challenge. Either one, one of two ways. When you're questioned, 
you'll become defensive and that's why people always say avoid talking about religion right because it can turn into a very negative situation mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. that's because people are defensive about their faith you know yes. Yes. because they don't know how to explain it right that was me I was right? that way but if you have the knowledge the knowing and that's what Father Lazarus taught me he said when he went off to the seminary and they started teaching things, a lot of it didn't make any sense to him. And so he questioned it. By the time he died, he was a cardinal in the, in the Catholic faith. I mean, so he went quite far. He was still very young at that time, too, when he passed away, when he passed on. But he questioned it. And he tested it. So when we say question, we're not talking about putting something down. No. No, we're not saying that. When I say, oh... That's not even right. That's not what we're saying. It's question to understand better. Exactly. Question to experience for yourself. It's like one day I remember, was that during the Christmas time? We went to um, Pastor Charlie's church. I won't say the name of the church, but we right. went to the church. Mm -hmm. And then he told a story about the, was it the Three Kings or the Magi's? I don't remember. Three Kings and Magi are the same. I know that, but yeah. I wasn't sure which one okay. he used, if he used Three Kings or oh, Magi. Which term? Right. I don't recall. Okay. So anyway, when, when, when he told a story, he told us about how they, they were somewhere for like 40 something. Like they had to wait a certain period of time. I don't, I don't recall the time period. I had never heard that. I was like, whoa, I didn't know that. You know? Mm -hmm. So that was new to me. And I said, this is good. So I said, now... So when I, got, when I got home, of course, I looked it up. I said, I wanted to know more about it. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I mean by questioning, right? I wasn't questioning as in, that can't be right. I knew it was right. But then I wanted to know more. It's like, okay, wh why, why did this happen? Why that did it have to wait so long? Right? But say so someone were to tell me, hey, that, that never happened. I'm like, really? What are you talking about? And I can give details and it, it makes sense to me. I can explain that. You know, if someone comes to me and says, Jesus never lived. Yeah, we could have a field with that one. I, I won't even waste time on that one. <laughs> I think I'll just walk away. I wouldn't waste my time on that one. You know, because just like how, you know, people have this thing where, where people say, well, Jesus was black. Jesus was a black man. Have you ever heard that? I've heard that. And my response is, okay, how does that change anything? Right. Does it matter what color his skin was? He still got crucified, <laughs> you know. He was still Mary's son and Joseph's son. Uh -huh. I don't think Mary looked and said, my son is black. <laughs> oh my God, what happened? Well, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I would think that if he was black, then she was black. So I don't think she'd be no, surprised. No, it could, it could be that, G, that, that Joseph was black and she wasn't. Oh, uh, okay, okay. You know, it could be a mixed marriage. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> right? But the point is, I, I don't know why Sorry, people. Jesus, we're not trying to be I, I don't know why people make a big deal out of that. You know, it's like, okay, he, he was black. Okay, so what? His name is still Jesus. Does it? Matter? He still got crucified. He, he still took him three days to rise from the dead. You know, mm -hmm. the, none of that changes. So when you have knowledge, it doesn't matter. None of stuff matters. I know that there are even movies or documentaries about this, about how Jesus lived in India. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. And people will argue, you know, any Catholic will argue, and they'll say, no, he didn't. Oh, so what? What if he did? And knowing that it's Jesus with all the power he has, mm -hmm. could he have gone and lived in India? Of course he could. Indeed. Just look at the possibility. If, if, you, if you have the knowledge, you know that God, Jesus is all powerful. Uh -huh. So why could he not be living, why could he not be living in India and everywhere else? That's right. So why are you wasting your time arguing about that, getting all upset that Jesus was, the, another one is that he was married. Uh-huh. That he was actually married. Right. Like, no, he wasn't. He was single. Okay, so if he were married, how does that matter? change anything? He still got crucified. Mm -hmm. He still did all the things that he did. He still accomplished what he came here to do. Exactly. So all he did as a married man. Is yeah. something wrong with that? Another, th another one that used to come up a lot between um, us Catholics in our Catholic Church and the Protestants that we knew was um, that Jesus had brothers and sisters. And of right. course, no, from what I was taught, and what my parents would always say, Jesus did not have brothers and sisters. Jesus was an only child. He was an immaculate conception. and it, you know, So the whole 
thing there. And then our Protestant friends would say, no, in there, he says my brother James and my exactly. brother John. And there was about brothers. brothers and, but that was a big heated debate. And I'm like, okay, now I'm looking, I'm going, did it matter? Jesus yeah. still did everything he was supposed to do, what he came here to do. He changed thousands of lives. Thousands? Millions. <laughs> <laughs> now it's wow. millions, probably billions by now. But at the time, it was, you know, those around, it was thousands. So again, the point is, and I, we only bring these things up to point out that when you know, mm -hmm. when you know for sure where you come from as far as religion goes, then none of these little things matter. They just don't. Just like their religion's based on a fact, or, or, or I'll say fact, but for them it's a fact that um, angels, or you, you have to communicate directly with God. There are no saints, right? Oh, right saints right. don't exist. Okay, so what? If you don't believe in saints, does that mean you have to change religion? No. Huh? Whether or not you believe in a saint, they still exist. Mm -hmm. And. I have a surprise for you if you think they're communicating directly with God. You know, when you go, when you go, oh God, and or supreme being, whatever it is, guess what? There's an angel right there, or there's a saint helping you anyway. They don't go like this. Well, he believes that he's communicating directly with God, so we'll just step out of the way. It doesn't work that way, right? You know, but as long as you know that your foundation is strong, then all these little fundamentals or these little things that people decide to use to make, to break off from the main, or I say, um, the teaching itself, which is the mother religion, mm -hmm. well, they use that to differentiate themselves, they don't matter. You know, you look at them, you accept them, you move on. Mm -hmm. We deal with Buddhist individuals, we, we deal with everybody from any, any, any religion, mm -hmm. because we understand that they're, they're simply a break off from the main Teachings. So the main teachings, right? Not a religion. No, the teachings main, is not a religion. The main teachings and laws of God. Right? The teachings are about spirituality. Mm -hmm. So we look at all these things and we understand, okay, we know where you're coming from. There are certain faiths that don't believe that Mother Mary is important. Correct. Well, here she is. She's the mother of Jesus. I mean, imagine someone telling you, telling me that my mom is not important and she gave me birth. And well, she didn't accomplish all the great things Jesus did. But, so what? He wouldn't be around if she didn't give him birth. Isn't that something? And then she had to raise him. She had to give him his values. Mm -hmm. But people don't think about that. So little things like those. This is where you have to understand your faith. You have to okay. know what it is that you're dealing with. Because the more you know, then when these little things come up, that's exactly what they are. They're trivial. They're very little. Mm -hmm. So I hope that explains you a, a little bit about knowing and having faith. I think it does. So if you have any questions or concerns or comments, please be sure to let us know. You can find us here on YouTube at 190 Vision. Our website is 190vision.com. In Facebook, we have a group called Clearing, Healing, and Guidance. And on Instagram, it's 190 Vision.